Um, hi, I'm Dr. Tracy Harrison. I'm one of the anesthesiologists at Mayo Clinic, and I am director of our pediatric pain rehabilitation program and also director of our acute and chronic pain service. And my article, Marijuana and Chronic Non-Malignant Pain in Adolescence, will be coming out in the Mayo Clinic Proceedings in July. Um, so my particular commentary is about a case series of three patients, three adolescent patients with chronic non-malignant pain who came to our chronic pain uh, clinic and uh, basically just taking a look at uh, their different um, factors regarding their pain and also looked quite a bit at functioning. So their ability to attend school, their ability to um, socialize, do the things that every normal teenager does. These patients basically self-reported that they used marijuana. In our pediatric chronic pain clinic, we do not test, we do not do drug abuse screens in those particular patients, so these are simply self-reported. So there potentially may be a larger number of patients out there using marijuana to treat their chronic pain and their symptoms. So in our patients with chronic pain, uh, we found that even though they were using particular substances uh, for their chronic pain, this didn't necessarily translate into their normal functioning. So like many patients with chronic pain, they did find it very difficult to attend school. These particular patients that were um, seen were not attending school at the particular time of their interview. Um, they had hoped to be able to get back to school, uh, but they were unable to do so, and they cited the fact that they had their pain and symptoms. This is what limited them in their ability to attend school. We also found that it limited their ability to uh, participate in normal teenage activities. So it was difficult for them to do things with their friends. Uh, it was sometimes difficult for them to uh, uh, work in any kind of capacity and also then started to contribute to um, different symptoms as far as mood, lower mood, um, and, and some anxiety. Uh, so these patients uh, that come to our pediatric chronic pain clinic, these three particular patients had pain locations that were very common for our patients that we see in our clinic, even the ones that are not uh, admitting to the use of marijuana. So these are uh, pain syndromes such as chronic daily headache, uh, abdominal pain, and these patients had undergone extensive evaluation to determine that there was no organic cause uh, for their particular pain, or they had been on medications to help to treat um, that particular um, problem. The, the problem with these patients with their chronic um, pain and their marijuana use is that they didn't readily accept our counsel um, to when we brought up to them that their marijuana use could actually contribute to some of the symptoms that they were complaining about. Um, so it was that presence of their chronic pain, um, it was their um, inability to attend school and their self-admitted, I guess, disappointment with their uh, inability to socialize and to do normal teenage things um, that really prompted us to say to take a look, you know, to ask them to take a look at their chronic marijuana use. They were actually quite defensive and they would say that the marijuana use did improve their pain or did improve some of their mood issues or improve some of their sleep or, or eating problems like many of the patients with chronic pain will have, but their their ability to function kind of spoke otherwise, that um, this was not an effective treatment uh, for them. Um, so we need to be proactive and we need to ask them if they're, say for example, smoking cigarettes or using substances um, in an attempt to treat particular symptoms, such as uh, difficulty sleeping, difficulty eating, some mood issues as well. Uh, we've even gone so far as to think about possibly doing drug of abuse screens on every patient that comes to our pediatric chronic pain clinic just so that we can determine what the real prevalence of uh, marijuana use and other substance use is in this population. So one of the concerns with the use of marijuana, whether it's an adult patient or an adolescent patient, is other symptoms that can, that can come about and actually lead to more disability. So for example, some patients will um, not be so motivated to do particular things. In other words, uh, whether it's social activities or whether it's education, they often will complain of the fact that um, it causes some slowing of cognition. When you put that, um, when you compound that with the fact that a number of, or a good number of chronic pain patients have a great difficulty in being able to concentrate on a given task, um, such as schoolwork or any kind of 
higher thinking, that is, that's just compounded by the marijuana use itself. So um, we have to be aware of really what we're suggesting to patients. There are different reports saying that they, um, there's actually a slowing of reflexes, of um, working with heavy machinery, driving. So as teenagers are um, trying to become a more normal teenager, if they're exposed to the effects of marijuana, really they shouldn't be driving at the same time and that can cause a, a, a lot of different problems. Um, there's also a uh, belief that as adolescents start to become exposed to marijuana at younger ages, that there is a, a higher risk of other types of uh, mental health issues. Uh, there's possibly an association with schizophrenia. Um, again, it's it's difficult to put that together. I think we also have to be aware of the fact that we're using a substance to help to alter some of those um, particular, uh, particular symptoms as opposed to being more actively engaged, trying to get back into school, trying to be functional, which is really the best thing that you can do for your chronic pain. This isn't getting into the legal battle of, of legalization of marijuana. Um, it's just basically looking at any particular substance that is a particular risk, there's, there's probably a very great potential for the use of uh, cannab cannabidiol uh, to have some analgesic properties. But I think the problem is at this point is that any medical provider would not recommend that that substance be used, especially in the smoked form. Uh, there is probably an equal chance of lung cancer when you're using marijuana and the inhaled route, um, and possibly there might even be more of an incidence of lung cancer in that particular setting. So uh, cannabidiol potentially has some very good analgesic properties, and I think science will eventually be able to extract that and be able to uh, deliver that to patients in a more acceptable form. This would not have those particular um, issues with cognitive uh, ability or reflexes or some of the A motivation that some of the, the smoked uh, cannabis can have at this particular point. I think one of the important points also about marijuana use, when you look at published studies of the effectiveness of the medication of, of marijuana, marijuana actually has a very, very low, a very small therapeutic window. So, um, which means that when you use the medication, there's a very, very fine balance between the analgesic effects and its ability to cause bothersome side effects. With any treatment, whether it's antidepressant medications that we give treating pain, um, or whether it's, an, um, uh, whether it's an anticonvulsant medication, any treatment uh, that you use, you need to make sure that that's having some positive effect on functioning. Ironically enough, with chronic pain, once your functioning begins to improve, actually sometimes your symptoms start to, to follow that and will start to improve over time. Um, one of our patients was actually given a recommendation for medical marijuana. The other two patients just smoked marijuana on their own and said it improved their symptoms and their pain. Uh, but when you ask patients what is the recommended dose, how frequently did your doctor recommend that you use marijuana, they will say no particular uh, dose was recommended to them, which means that they um, oftentimes will smoke until they feel better, and in that instance there's probably a higher chance of them uh, having those bothersome side effects. Chronic pain is very, very complex, and we know that it's not as simple as taking a medication, and that will make all your symptoms better so that you can get then get back to school. It requires really multidisciplinary care, so a primary care provider who is associated with other specialists with the focus of uh, suggesting those patients get back to school. That's probably the number one recommendation, is to be able to get back to school, get back into that regular schedule, regular normal teenage functioning. We hope you benefited from this presentation based on the content of Mayo Clinic proceedings. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you're interested in more information about Mayo Clinic Proceedings, visit our website at www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you will find additional videos on our YouTube channel, and you can follow us on Twitter. 
For more information on health care at Mayo Clinic, please visit www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.